Oh, I've been grinding at this and like for real. Grinding your own coffee, come on. Like this is a lot of work. And it's not even ground good enough. Like I was spinning this thing forever. Do you guys do you guys do this? Yep, this is probably never gonna happen again. I can already tell you this. No matter how good of a cup of coffee that is. Yep, I am uh I'll never Nope. Every coffee snob out there is going, no chrome, no, use a hand grinder, use a hand grinder. It's a million times more work. Let's see if all that extra work was worth it. Nope, same old cup of coffee that I made yesterday using my electric grinder. Welcome to FedEx. Welcome to FedEx. Bienvenue chez FedEx. For service in English, say English or press 1. English. This call may be monitored or recorded for quality assurance. This FedEx ground shipment is on the way to the station that serves the delivery area. Incorrect. This is the most up-to-date information on the presentation. Speak to a representative. Our representatives don't have any Speak to a representative. Just a moment while I transfer you to a FedEx customer service representative. Hi, hello, it's a pleasure. Thank you so much for calling FedEx. I'm Oscar. How may I help you today? Hey, Oscar. Um, I'm calling about a tracking number. eight. Okay, yes. Thank you so much. I got it. And so, by any chance, may I have your name, please? Uh, yeah, Chrome. Tell, tell me, Chrome. Okay, so I phoned probably about three or four days ago, and we changed the shipping address on there because it was going to a FedEx pickup location in Dartmouth, Nova Scotia. And we changed that address to um, another one, probably, I don't know, three or four days ago, I guess. And it shows to me today that it's still going to Dartmouth. Okay, let me see what is the information that we have by any chance. Uh, could you provide me the, that address that you, you sent this package before? Yeah, so, so the Dartmouth address is actually a FedEx pickup location. Yes, that is correct. I have the I have the authorization for this package to be sent to that place. Just let me see what's going on because this is FedEx ground. Yeah, that's yeah. Um, yeah, that's fine. As long as it's coming to this new address. Totally. Don't worry about it. I understand. And don't worry about it. Most surely you're going to receive the, a notification that says that your package is still in transit to that location, but they're going to correct they they going to correct this information as soon as possible. Okay, okay. excellent. Thank you, sir. I really appreciate this. Don't worry, Grom, it was a pleasure. By any chance, I'm going to disconnect this call right now, but thank you so much for calling. I hope you have a wonderful day. Please be safe, Grom. You bye too. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Are you serious? <laughs> Are you serious? So I just turned my camera on to record this phone call with FedEx because I just got off the phone with FedEx just before that phone call. <sighs> the lady made me so angry. So angry. I was just like livid mad. This guy got on the phone, no stress. I talked to two FedEx girls this morning that had me so angry. So I guess you guys want a deeper story. Well, I have been having problems with my IceCo fridge. And I was hoping to get the fridge from Iceco and just do this all in one video instead of dragging drama out over two weeks. My fridge has failed me 100%. I lost over $100 worth of Cruises Raw dog food gone, vegetables gone. So what's happening with my fridge is I have the settings set. And the fridge sometimes decides that it wants to be a freezer. So overnight, they'll just rotate. And now all of a sudden, all my stuff in the fridge will freeze. All the stuff in my freezer will thaw out, meaning all Cruz's raw meat, garbage. All of it, garbage. My vegetables, garbage. And then it'll decide, boop, it wants to flip itself back a couple days later. So I called Iceco and it was a quick, easy call. Like they answered the phone, they got me taken care of, but then it's been nothing but problems on the shipping front. And it started with a mistake from Iceco. They're like, no problem, Chrome, we'll get you a new fridge. Bada boom, fridge gets shipped. 
Then it arrives in Prescott, Arizona. I'm not in Prescott, Arizona. Where they got that address from, I don't know. And I kept pumping the address that I'm at to them in every email. And they screwed that up. So then a week goes by and we've barely had any food in the back because, well, I have no way to keep food in the back anymore. Oh, and I've been so frustrated with Ice Coast. So I called them. I'm like, where the hell is my fridge? They're like, it's been delivered. <laughs> what? Prescott, Arizona? I'm not there. I'm in Canada. Oh, I'm sorry. And then they changed the address again. And I gave them a new address to ship the product to. The new one. And all of a sudden... I get a tracking notification from Iceco saying, hey, your fridge is on its way. I look at the thing. I'm like, you're shipping it to Dartmouth where you ship my original one. I gave you guys a completely different address to send me my replacement fridge. No, they sent it to the original address that was on the original shipping thing. And I'm not there, obviously. So then I had to go message Iceco and say, hey, yo, why is it going there? I provided you with a new address in my email when I said, hey, my fridge is broken. Here's the address, send me a new one. Nope, they still sent it to the old one. So I got on the phone with FedEx a week ago and I'm like, guys, I need to change the shipping address. Like, no, you can't, the shipper has to. So I messaged Iceco. Iceco's like, no, we don't have to, you do it. I'm like, you shipped the package to the wrong address. Why do I have to do it? I got so mad with ice co i was pissed i was so mad i was ready to turn my camera on open the back doors and boot my fridge out the back door and then i finally got a hold of fedex and finally got a hold of somebody a week ago that could help me we changed my shipping address everything seemed okay then this morning i pulled up my my tracking thing and i looked at it and it was like, my fridge is in Quebec on its way to Dartmouth, Arizona, Dartmouth, Nova Scotia. I'm like, it went right past me in Ontario. Where is it going? So I called FedEx this morning and I'm like, what the heck? I thought I changed the address with you. The lady at FedEx is like, can't help you, sir. The shipper has to change the address. I'm like, no, we already changed it. No, sir. Sorry. Call the shipper. And I got mad with her. I'm like, are you serious? I'm like, did I, I went through this stuff a week ago with you guys and all of a sudden now you want me to contact the shipper again? And then the shipper is the only one that can correct this? I'm like, we already went through this. I kept getting madder and madder and <laughs> madder this morning. This has been a two week ordeal with my fridge. And when you're living in a van on the road, having stuff shipped to you is a problem. It's normally easy, but when you're dealing with a company that can't get shipping right, Ice Co. Sorry, guys. I don't want to say anything bad about you, but this has been like, uh, I am. Uh. And the funny thing is about that Ice Co. fridge is uh, I haven't even take it out, taken it out to the backcountry yet. It's been on the pavement the whole time I've had it. I haven't even had the chance to abuse it yet. It's been pampered and it's. So anyway, long story short, when I talked to Iceco, they were like, okay, hey, this is not a problem that we hear about. So, you know, Chrome will just send you out a new one. And I just said, hey, is there parts you can send me? Maybe it's just the control panel. Send me a new control panel. I'll put a new one in. Anything to not ship this whole thing around and deal with this kerfuffle. But that's the frustrating part is... If I was stationary, this would be no big deal. It'd be pretty easy. But because I'm always on the move and always at different shipping addresses, when delays like this happen, then I'm locked to an area until this is corrected. So situations like this make travelers stop traveling because they can't travel because they're waiting for something from somebody who can't get their stuff together. Let me, let, let me go show you what's going on back there. It's at three degrees and minus 20. So during the day yesterday, this was at 10 degrees and this stayed at minus 20. So for the last couple of days or a week, it's been sitting around around here. But let's take a look and see where it's set at. This is set at zero. That's set at minus 10. 
but that's at minus 20. That's at three degrees because it's cool outside. Once this gets warmer during the day, that's gonna go to like plus 10. So there's nothing in there right now except for some warm beer. And my freezer is got Cruz's food in it, thankfully. But this is only gonna last until this decides it wants to be plus 10 and this side decides it wants to be minus 20. So in the last couple of weeks, I've been having this problem. I watch my fridge a couple times a day, and if it does decide to switch, I throw Cruz's dog food on that side because I don't have an option for Cruz because he's on raw food. So I watch this, and if it decides to change identities, like the fridge decides it wants to be a freezer, I just rotate the food to the next compartment. So I'm not keeping anything at all in this side because it's so temperamental that, you know, I'm ruining so much food and it's costing me so much money, but this is, um, ah, ice cold. I'm gonna take all the beer out of here just in case it decides to freeze again. Oh, oh this milk's gonna be rotten. Check this out. It's like solid. This is disgusting. I dare you to smell that. All right, let's try turning this fridge into a freezer and see if it actually turns it into a fridge. Let's go minus five. That's at minus 10, but it's actually at minus 20. Let's see if that changes. this morning. Yeah, come on. It's still the same. So the settings are at, that's the current temperatures of each compartment. Settings are at minus five, minus 10. And it's at three and 20. And like I said, if it gets hot today, this will start to rise to like plus 10 and this will always stay at minus 20. Like it's like deep freezing everything in my freezer to the point that Cruz's food is now going bad. Ah, give me a sec. Yeah, I picked up some pouches from, from Amazon. I originally got this pouch here, which has um, a tire deflator in it. And, uh, I really liked it, put it on my door. So then I went on there and found some other ones. And these ones here don't have anything quite in them yet. Not sure what I'm gonna put in them. I just thought it might be kind of great to put some of the quick grab stuff that I might need. Like maybe some of Cruzy stuff that I use for his nose and things. Just quick on the draw here because like stuff for Cruz's nose is in this drawer, which means if I need it, I gotta lift this up. And if there's stuff on top of it, it gets to be a bit of a pain. Good morning, Cruzy. <laughs> and then I got this big one for the door. And I want to turn this one into a uh, first aid kit and stuff like that. And maybe whatever else. I don't know. I'm really not even too sure yet. But it's got a double compartment in here. It's got a top one. And I just went on to Amazon, typed in tactical bag, and then these came up. You know, which is kind of cool. I won't use this inside patch, but yeah, maybe I'll turn one of these into... Um, first aid kit. And I also ordered myself a lunch kit, aka my shower bag. So I had another shower bag before I bought a lunch kit from Canadian Tire and I liked how small it was, but it had this little mesh thing on the side where I used to put my clippers because I cut my own hair and then that thing just deteriorated. So this one, it has a compartment on the bottom for all my shower supply stuff. And it has a top section here where I keep my razor. And it's got a really strong mesh one. The other one was like practically like a little thin dainty lace that was on the side of the bag. Uh, and I figured with that brand on it, it's got to be somewhat durable if these guys are using these lunch kits at uh, construction sites. Yeah, pretty stoked on that. I made my coffee this morning with the electric grinder. 
because using that other hand grinder is just, well, <laughs> not for me. If you're the kind of person that really enjoys doing that in the morning to make coffee, good on you. Me, I put my coffee grinds in the electrical one, push the lid down three little separate times, and bada boom, the coffee grinds come out perfect, and then the coffee's just good, and it's faster. And maybe it's me being lazy, but grinding coffee beans by hand, yeah, not not a cool thing. Oh yeah, and uh, there's a social media app that's been kind of getting a, a little bit of hype lately, and it's called Vero. It's kind of like what Instagram used to be, and... Um, but one of the guys I follow, Peter McKinnon, um, I've been following him on YouTube for years, he uh, he talked about it. So I went over there and started myself a profile on uh, Vero and uh, posted my first picture yesterday. <laughs> uh, always feels weird to start on a new platform, um, but I was not a fan of Instagram and I shut my Instagram down um, a little while ago. So I have no connections, no followers. That's me. <laughs> Uh, anyway, uh, let's check on... looked on you yesterday, I went to Quebec, that's when I called. Now it looks like it's in Dartmouth, Nova Scotia. And then it still says it's going from Dartmouth to Dartmouth. It's raining outside. And I have a weekend camp out thing to go to this weekend, and it's starting to rain. <laughs> Madison here at Rail Fitted did say, I think it's going to rain all weekend. I looked at the weather, Mike. No, it's not. <laughs> Apparently. Anyway, guys, you're getting this in real time. It's Friday, September 16th at 6 34 a.m. I'll be right back, Cruzy, okay? You just hold down the fort. I had a subscriber give me this this army laundry bag and I love it. Run, let's go, let's go. <laughs> Rainer's probably watching me on his cameras out there. Going, what are you doing, Chrome? <laughs> Cause every oh, there's cameras all over the property here and they're motion censored, so he gets a shot in his camera the second movement happens. <laughs> There's a guy out there running around with a great big, great big knapsack. Probably look like Santa Claus in my underwear. <laughs> oh my gosh. So anyway, I, uh, I hope this fridge thing gets dealt with really soon because I am sick and tired of wrecking Cruz's dog food. I'm really thankful lately, though, that the freezer side has decided to just stay at minus 20. The problem with minus 20 is it causes freezer burn on his food real quick. So I can't keep a whole lot of stuff in there because it just goes bad on the other way. So it either thaws out when it decides it wants to be a fridge or it just gets too frozen. And um, yeah, well, you guys get it. You guys have freezers. You know how that stuff works. So I'm hoping to get this stuff resolved really soon and hoping that the next fridge that they send out to me actually works without any problems. And, um, you know, because things happen. You know, I understand that when things get manufactured, things happen. Something could go wrong with one in every thousand fridges. Let's hope maybe that's the case with me and this isn't just a reoccurring problem. Um, I met some people at the subscriber gathering that I just finished doing that had ice co fridges for years and they were like, Chrome, I'm so stoked to hear you get the ice co. I've had mine for years, no problems. And right away I'm like, mine doesn't work. <laughs> They're like, no. Uh, yeah. So, oh, sorry. Yeah, I need to see me like flipping around with my underwear. But I gotta do what I gotta do. Um, so yeah. This weekend, um, I'm going to a camp out with a bunch of with a bunch of people. So hopefully the weather eases up a little bit and uh, we don't get rained out this entire weekend. So that's why I wanted to make this video, um, because I'm not sure if if there's going to be a pile of trees up where we are. I may not be able to get any videos posted this weekend. So I thought I'd post this one, and if I get some time, um, I might see if I can. Um, get another quick uh, video edited 
Um, I think the next video is uh, talking about uh, the battery system in my van and going over everything with the crew here at Ray Outfitted. So I know a bunch of you probably didn't watch the video that I posted yesterday. The video I posted yesterday was a Jackery video for the new battery that they sent out to me. And I always know when I make those videos that a lot of people don't care. A lot of people have bought the Jackeries already or they've bought their own power stations or they just have no interest and I understand that. Um, but those companies uh, pay a lot of money for those videos. So <laughs> for me, when uh, you know my biggest sponsor on my channel reaches out to me and offers me a dollar value to make a dedicated video about a new battery, I'm going to say yes to it. And there's no way you guys would say no to doing something like that if this offer was offered to you guys. Like that video yesterday, literally bought brand new rims and tires for the ambulance. Like that, bada boom, one video. So, and because right now I have the ambulance build on my mind, uh, taking on offers like that are really hard to say no to. So when I took on Surfshark the other time, my daughter was getting a bunch of dental work done and I didn't have the extra cash for it. So I took on Surfshark as a sponsor so I could pay for my daughter's dental stuff. So she just had some surgery, she needed she needed braces and then after that she needed some surgery and stuff on, on one of her teeth just to kind of get them all straightened out. And yeah, I took on Surfshark. So Surfshark, thank you very much for helping out with my daughter's dental care. See, I take on these things for a reason. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Anyway, guys, I'm babbling at this point. Thanks for watching, everybody. Cheers. Sometimes I don't know why I turn my camera on. Mm. All right. Those are folded. My underwear. This goes in the front. Over here, my underwear goes in the drawer with all my cologne. There we go. Boom. This goes into the cubby underneath the bed. Let's put these on the floor. Right there. Really, out of all my clothes, it's all I had was two t-shirts two and a pair of shorts. I am probably going to wear these today. <laughs> Let's uh, do my shorts and the Vansity Van Life shirt. Those are my clothes for today.